Hi, this is Kate McKinnon with Contemporary Geometric Beadwork. I'd like to show you how the jellyfish net folds up into a set of mirror tetrahedra. The kaleidocycle is made from three sets, three sets of mirror tetrahedra, and so each one of these jellyfish represents one third of the machine. And it's important if you have a pattern that you'd like to follow that your cycle be laid out in the right way to get the effect that you're looking for. This lovely little cycle was done by Claudia Firthner from Austria, and she also assembled this larger jellyfish net out of uh, size 10 delica beads, nice big cylinder beads, and her join beads around the edge are size 11 cylinder beads. I assembled this one to the same design in different, slightly different colors, and I used size 11 cylinder build beads to build mine, and size 15 rounds around the edge. And you'll see join beads all the way around this one. You see join beads sort of randomly around this one. In the pattern that I gave the bead along, I suggested that we put them all the way around each edge like this one. I want to convince you that it doesn't matter at all, especially if you're using a technique of building individual triangles as components and then just using shorter threads, different threads, to add the join beads and do the joins. There isn't any ripping or frogging if you're adding or removing these join beads because they're not part of the structure of the triangles. So the obligation here is really to build your components very cleanly. And then these little round beads can be snipped off and added. It, it takes nothing to add or subtract them. So adding or removing them is no big deal. I would like to have you consider instead the effects that you can get, whether you use the join beads to the join beads. You see, if you wanted to join the gold beads to the gold beads, then you could actually see four rows of join beads at each hinge, and then there would be some sort of bead between them. Um, that might be a beautiful visual effect that you want. Another tactic is to sew all four sets of gold beads directly into the clear hinge beads. And that sounds a little bit harder than it is, but it's fiddly and it's something you need to be willing to do. Another way to do this is to follow the more traditional net design, like the flower face that we showed previously. This is my current favorite way to assemble a cycle. And you can see that this is joined at the hinge and then also here down at the bottom. So if you'd like to not worry about joining all of these into the hinge, if you're not looking for engineering linkage, you can join these two triangles together here with one set of join beads or two. If you decide that you'd like to sew this one together like that one, again, don't stress about these little gold beads or whatever you use for join beads because the idea is that you can just remove them without a thought. Again, this isn't frogging. This isn't anything. This is just removing a few beads. And we're going to go around the edges of these when we're done anyway. So to come in here, remove those beads and choose to join like this instead, well, there's nothing to it. It's essentially meaningless to the beads. They don't care. This isn't holding them together. And when you re-sew these this together and put these join beads into this triangle, it will be sturdy. So this is how little I care about join beads coming and going. And I'll show you here on this big one. One of the tactics I have, if you would like to sew all four join beads into the hinge, right? In this case, it would be all four rows of these orange beads getting into these glass cylinders right here. Well, I do have a little trick for that to make it a bit easier. I do these hinges, I do this side first before I sew any of the rest of this up so that I still have a lot of room to move it. And I use a longish thread. This half is attached to a needle ready to sew up this side. And this half of the thread has already laced together the join beads and the clear glass beads of the hinge. And you see that? This is already laced. So then when I come over here to lace up this one, I can have the same luxury of observing each stitch, making sure it's right, and then I can pull the whole thing tight at once. So to put in this second round of stitching, 
I would be lacing my beads. Again, be careful not to get your coat button funny, right? But I'll be lacing like this on this side, right? And when you get into the hinge, you may find it hard to go more than one bead at a time. And again, be sure and watch out for loops. Loops are really the one thing that are a common way to die in the collider cycle. You suddenly find you've looped around something. So you see, you can just go in and lace this one just like you did the other one. And, you know, it's it's not easy to get your needle through all these beads, but neither is it impossible. So if you just lace slowly and then you pull these all snug at the end when you're done, you're going to have that nice clean look that you see in some of our cycles of all of the join beads going directly into the hinge. And if you join the join beads to the join beads, then that's a look too. Once you've got that buttoned up, then it's simply a matter of attaching this one flap. And again, if you have two sets of join beads there and you decide that you only want one, well, it's no big deal. Just snip one off. It doesn't care. And again, if you have built this properly and your join beads are not on your working thread, you're not going to have to worry about tactics like this at all. Your triangles are still going to be very secure and you put together these tetrahedra any way that pleases you visually. Just be sure not to fold them up backwards. Let me just refresh your memory on what I mean by that. What you don't want to do is close one up this way and the other one up this way because then your patterns won't match. So just be sure when you're closing the jellyfish that each leg of your, of your jellies end up folding in the same direction. And remember, if you want to, you can sew this together first so that it's a little bit more like the flower face join. Sewn together at the bottom, simply pinch together in the middle, and there you go, instant tetrahedra. So I actually greatly prefer this join over this join, just doing the face and then adding the fourth face as we did making this beautiful little machine. We left open faces and then did a combination of inserting pre-made triangles and then I showed a beautiful way to decrease, which I think is so neat, you can decrease any hexagon into a set of mirror tetrahedra instantly by doing only the face closures. There's no other seeming necessary. It's just that from an engineering standpoint, you may find it advantageous if these are connected here. Say if you're holding up a building, right? For holding together a kaleidocycle though, however you hinge this is absolutely a matter of design as much as it's a matter of structure. So keep your stitches neat. Don't clog up your triangles with too much thread, and please don't worry a bit about removing or adding join beads. And you can see from this why I think it's so important that they not be a part of the construction of the components. Enjoy your joining, and be sure and show me your results.